Ladies and gentlemen, I am François Bujon de Letton, Ambassador of France to the United States. In the spring of 1940, France was invaded and humiliated. In the space of just four weeks, its army, ill-prepared for the war, but facing the enemy courageously, had lost 120,000 soldiers who had sacrificed their lives, alas, in vain, to defend their country. France's population was fleeing before the aggressor. Its government had collapsed. Those were the grimmest of days, days of darkness and despair. Under the brute strength of tyranny, an entire people found itself suddenly deprived of liberty and freedom. The future looked bleak, and there seemed to be no reason for hope. In the midst of total disaster, however, one man stood tall, surrounded by just a few. General Charles de Gaulle went to London, and on the 18th of June, 1940, speaking through a microphone of the British Broadcasting Corporation, called for the French to join him, to refuse to lay down their weapons and resist, resist and fight. With an astonishing premonition of what would happen four years later, on the longest day following the longest winter, General de Gaulle rekindled hope in the hearts of the French people by saying, France does not stand alone. She is not isolated. Behind her is a vast empire, and she can make common cause with the British Empire, which commands the seas and is continuing the struggle. Like England, she can draw unreservedly on the immense industrial resources of the United States. On the 6th of June, 1944, General de Gaulle's vision became a reality. Under the command of General Eisenhower, 70,000 Americans, together with British, Canadian, French, and other allied companion in arms, set foot on the beaches of Normandy. Our American allies were following the path of Pershing's army during World War I and answering the call of Lafayette during the War of Independence. Like the men of Rochambeau in Yorktown, they had crossed the sea in the service of liberty. They were soldiers of a free nation up in arms against oppression. In the cold mists of that gray morning, the powerful armada of Operation Overlord brought the liberators to the soil of France, where they broke through the wall of fire set off by the enemy. Omaha, Utah, Juno, Gold, Sword, the code names given to the beaches resonate today as as many symbols of freedom. A freedom paid for dearly by those who fell in the sand never to rise again. The soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice, among them the 21 brave boys from Bedford, were young men in the prime of their lives. They served their country and its core values in the world's most powerful and well-trained army. But there were also good sons, nephews, boyfriends, who had left behind the warmth of their homes tucked away in a generous country. Their future was stolen from them by a faraway war. Yet what they fought for were universal values, and in defending a battered Europe under the Nazi yoke, they defended the very foundations of their nation and their country's collective past and future. They joined with the French Resistance, the underground organization of half a million men and women who had secretly paved the way for their D-Day landing. Their conjunction would in a few weeks liberate Paris and in a few months all of France, opening up the path to the final victory. 
Ladies and gentlemen, France does not forget. And I want to express my country's profound gratitude to all the veterans that risked their lives in that great battle. The memorial we are inaugurating today is a well-deserved tribute to the young men and women who fought in Normandy. Thanks to them, the ideals upon which our two nations have been founded remain the solid basis of our societies. They also remain the fundamental inspiration of the extraordinary French-American friendship and alliance that transcends the centuries. On behalf of the French people, your oldest ally, allow me to say once again, thank you, America. God bless the United States. Vive la France. I am General Jean-Philippe Douin, Grand Chancelier of the Légion d'Honneur. I will read a letter from General Alain de Boissieu, General de Gaulle's son-in-law. Dear comrades in arms, as a member of the second French Armored Division who fought alongside you in Normandy, I wish to join you today, wholeheartedly, with all the members of the United States forces who took part in the most extraordinary military undertaking of the 20th century, the successful landing under the fire of fully equipped armies on our Normandy beaches. The boldness of this operation and the incredible courage of the sailors, airmen, and particularly the soldiers who made this heroic deed possible will serve as a shining example to future generations. You, the surviving actors and witnesses, are to be thanked and praise beyond words. But this great enterprise, so vividly depicted today before your eyes, is also a manifestation of the power of the human spirit. This dedication to freedom and justice and the values of our free society has inspired our two nations from the very early days of Washington and Lafayette to Pershing and Clemenceau in the days of our fathers and in our own lifetime Eisenhower and de Gaulle. I am also proud to express to you my feelings of gratitude today on the 57th anniversary of the landings that made it possible for my country to get rid of the intolerable foreign occupation it had suffered for nearly four years. The friendship that has bound our two nations throughout the century and used unto, until today. May your children and ours forever remember the selfless and generous action of the Allied soldiers, sailors and airmen of 1944. Nor shall we forget the sacrifice of those who did not return. And may future generations in our two countries continue to work together to preserve peace as well as the values that we hold sacred. God bless America and vive la France.